Greetings, I'm Paul, and I want to talk about labeling. So we are what we eat, we are what we entertain, we are what we listen to, we are what we watch, we are what we see. We are uh, some of all of these bits of information or input stuff. Food isn't information, but I guess it is. It gives information to the body. The point is that whatever we attend to with our senses, whatever we consume into our bodies, uh, we become. Now this is true as well for the mental things, the labels that we put on ourselves. Years ago I had a little, um, little cartoon I drew based on Howard Becker's labeling theory, which I learned in a sociology class a long time ago and really enjoyed. I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but <clears throat> the idea that we receive labels from society, from other people, and from ourselves, and that changes how we feel about ourselves, how we think about ourselves, and changes who we become, who we are, who we manifest as ourselves. And so this is coming back around to me. Over the years, uh, I've had a, a, my, my belief on this content, on this subject, has changed a little bit. So I remember thinking back when, um, when I first learned about this. I was, man, I can't remember now. There's a little cartoon I did. Uh, is these kids on the playground, and they're all, uh, all these kids, their kid, kids are calling the one kid names. And then he says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names have the ability to categorically redefine my self-concept or something like that. Something to the effect of, uh, whatever you say, I might then interpret and make a part of me, and I will become that thing that you're calling me. But it's my choice to do that. But uh, that was the, well, I don't know if that was the joke or not, but that's what I believe now. And I remember thinking back in the day, uh, the names didn't hurt, and then I went to names do hurt. because. So I was thinking, like, you know, the whole sticks and stones would break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Because at one point I, I said, well, it, sorry, microphone. It, if I am identifying with the thing that you're calling me, then. Uh, I'm choosing to allow it to hurt me. So I can choose not to identify with it and choose not to let it hurt me. And so in that case, you could break my, my bones with a bat, but you can't break my spirit or my heart with a word. And so that was what I thought. And then I got into studying sociology, and I read about Howard Becker. And I thought, well, no, it's if, if labels can actually change who you are, so names can hurt. So you can break my bones with a bat, but you can also break my spirit or my heart with words and then so then I was into that for a while but now I've come back around to that the power is within us to decide whether or not we will accept the label or accept the the nasty words from another person it's that's our choice and so if we choose to embrace those negative things the harmful things then we will experience the, the impact of it, the effect of it if I accept your label of me then I will embrace that label I will become that label if I reject that label, then it doesn't stick to me. Like, you know, name, uh, what is it? I'm rubber, you're glue. <laughs> Whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks to you. There's some wisdom in some of these sayings, or at least they get us to a point where we can consider the wisdom uh, behind, the con behind the actual topic. But I believe that I am rubber or glue, depending on what I choose to be. If I choose to be rubber, not necessarily the name that you you send to me bounces off of me and sticks to you, unless you're choosing to be glue. We could both be rubber, and then you could throw a name at me and it would bounce off me and go back to you, and then bounce off you and come back at me and bounce off me, and so on and so on. No, I don't really think that's the case. If we're both rubber, you're probably not insulting me in the first place, and if you are, then it's going to bounce off me and it will stick to you, because if we are hurling insults, um, if we are get, whatever we're giving out, that's who we truly are. So if we're truly rubber, we're not going to be hurling insults. Um, so the parable of the gift, uh, I saw this on Spirit Science channel, Spirit Science, go watch that channel if you haven't seen it, it's very great. And so in essence, this is a, a parable where, the parable of the gift. So I, I think, I, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I'm the gift giver, I come to you and I say, here's a gift, I brought this gift for you. And here, let's use it something tangible. Here's a gift, it's a quarter. Here's a gift for you. Do you want it? And you say, I don't want that gift. Well, then whose gift is it? Who, who owns this? If you reject it, you deny it, who owns this? I do. It's in my possession. Now, let's say I came to you and said, you're a jerk and I hate you and I'm full of anger towards you. And you say, 
I'm sorry. Well, you don't have to say, okay, I accept that you feel that way. I don't accept your insults. I don't accept your anger. I don't want it. Or whatever. I don't know what do you say, but you, you just ignore it and you don't accept it. You don't take it on. You be rubber, right? And, and so who's holding the anger? Who's holding the insults? Me. If you don't accept them, I'm still holding them. I'm always looking, I'm looking, look at the camera. I'm looking right to the screen. I don't know why I do this, but I, instead of looking at the camera, which is right there, I look right here, which is just the, the area on the wall back here by the bookshelf right here. I'm looking right here. This is who I'm talking to, this void. Um, look at the camera. So if I'm throwing anger at you and you don't receive it, I'm holding the anger. So if I'm the one that's sending it, I'm probably glue because it's going to stick to me. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just going too far into that old saying. Back to the labeling. So I now believe that it's impossible for me to be labeled by somebody else without my consent. I mean, you can say whatever you want about me, but it doesn't affect me. It doesn't impact me without my consent. I have been, even more recently, I have been curious about because energy levels if, if we're all vibrations if my anger is a vibration if I throw my vibration at you does that hurt you without you accepting it you know what I'm saying so you might not accept it but you might feel some injury of it and that's what so that's what I'm wondering but I think that if we've got ourselves locked in to a, a healthy vibration a healthy life and a healthy self-concept and relationship with our spirit our true self a healthy awareness, then we are not injured, even though no matter what uh, frequency a person throws at you, what frequency and environment you're in, whatever it is, it's still your choice. So I think that we can get to that point, but it's difficult to be there. I don't think I'm at that point, but I'd like to be someday. And so you rest on my arm, rest on the chair and slip off it. You, know, you ever do that and you go going like that and it's so awkward feeling? And you do it on the camera in front of all of the people who are watching this. The whole world watches my videos someday. Um, everybody. Everybody in the whole world sees me sit here and not be able to sit in a chair functionally. For the most part, I am. See, there I am labeling myself. So <clears throat> if we don't embrace the label, if we don't take it onto ourselves, then it can't um, stick. It can't embed. But if we do, then it becomes real. And I was just talking. I, just, I did a podcast episode today. Stop recovering, start living, streaming wherever podcasts are streamed. Go check it out. Link in the description for that at anchor.fm slash Paul Dash Brody, I think is what it is. Um, but there's a link. If you're curious, I talked about my experience with social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder. Um, I had an experience last week with a panic attack, which was new for me in the uh, you know, first time in 19 years. That I've experienced that level um, of whatever. And so it made me think somewhat about these labeling issues um, that we can, we can create these things for ourselves. I had a thought and I lost it. But in a video I did last week, right around, the, you know, right before I had this panic episode, um, I was talking about Joe Dispenza saying, I, if we say I am, any, whatever we say, I am fill in the blank, then we become that thing. And that's, that's the labeling. And, and this is my microphone stands falling over here. If we, so whatever we label ourselves, it, it sets up that, that um, communication between the brain and the heart. Like I said in another video, or Joe Dispenza said, like I quoted him or copied him. Um, the brain thinks it, the body feels it. The body feels it, the brain senses it, and becomes aware of it, and thinks it more. The more the brain thinks it, the more the heart, the body feels it. And then the more the brain is aware of it. And so we got this set up this loop. I think that's exactly what happened to me last week. I was, I, for whatever reason, I think, I think what happened was I was experiencing a, a blood sugar spike and felt, or, or low, I don't know, something to do with my blood sugar though. So, that, so my eating habits had changed a little bit last week. I think something to do with that. I was feeling dizzy, um, had like feeling weak. My hands were getting numb at one point. Uh, heart was beating really fast. And, um, I felt this impending wave of um, panic, and I didn't think of it in the initially. I didn't think of it as a panic attack, even though I, I knew that if I concentrated on that thought, that I would probably fall into uh, a point where I couldn't control it. So I was kind of just trying to focus and breathe and stay 
right away. You know, this, this thing's coming at me, and I'm trying to, like, hold it at bay right here so it wouldn't hit me. And I was able to do that. But at some point, I started thinking maybe these are symptoms of a heart attack. And you know, my, my dad passed away from a heart attack four months ago, so this is still fresh. This hurts and fresh on, in my mind, I suppose. Um, but my, I have uh, three of my dad's brothers have already died from heart attack. His dad died from a heart attack. So it's, it's a big thing on that side of the family. And you know, I haven't been the healthiest over the years, and I've been working on that recently. And so I think all of these things have been floating around in my mind, and then I start to have these unknown panic symptoms uh, there's nothing that really I felt triggered it. So there's nothing I was aware of. I go, okay, yeah, this caused this anxiety response in me. But so I started to feel, I started to think, I'm having a heart attack. Am I having a heart attack? And the more I thought that, the more I felt it, and the more it became that, and to the point where my blood pressure was up really high and my uh, pulse was pounding and I wasn't, wasn't even moving. I was sitting still. And so it was scary. And so, um, but it, it turns out it wasn't a heart attack. It was a panic attack, it seems to be. But to me, it illustrated what I'm talking about with this labeling stuff. I labeled myself as having a heart attack. My body believed it, and then it gave me its best rendition of a heart attack without actually doing such a thing. Or if you want to get more spiritual on it, which I'm not going to get into too deep, but I think another element of this is that I'm experiencing a uh, a spiritual transition around the heart chakra, uh, the fourth energy center, and something so almost like a spiritual emotional heart attack um, rather than a physical heart attack um, as part of spiritual progression. But that's something that I'm still contemplating. But it's a, it's a reality. It's a possibility, I guess is what I'm saying. So anyway, whatever we label ourselves, we are. So be careful what you label yourself. If you are what you label yourself, whatever, something like that. Um, and we don't have to accept other people's labels. We don't have to accept our own labels um, but because we will, <laughs> so uh, because we will, and because we will become the things that we label ourselves. I guess that's where I'm going. Because I will become the things that I label myself. I need to take care, be aware, and have intentionality behind the labels that I give myself. Because if I don't, then I will label myself as something that I don't want to be, or might cause discomfort in my life, or might be a, a problem down the road. So remember that you have all the power. Um, and even when you don't feel like you have all the power, because there are external influences we don't have control over, but you don't have all the control, you have all the power. And when you have all the power, you can create, you are aware, you have intention, and if you follow those things in your life, then you can have the life, you can have a life that you want because you'll, you'll find the meaning in it and enjoy it, be satisfied with it. Um, and so that's it for today. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.